Hey, what's up puzzlers? Uh, today I wanted to give you a down and dirty overview of how I frame and preserve my puzzles using art resin. Uh, so this is obviously a more involved uh, process than the traditional puzzle glue or tape, uh, but I've been kind of hooked on the results. It's a beautiful result uh, if you take the time to do it right. Uh, so I wanted to share with you because it's something different and unique. So obviously first thing you need to do is build your puzzle. Uh, once I'm done with a puzzle, I cut, this is a three quarter inch extruded foam board. I'll put a link to everything uh, that I've used here today in the description. So three quarter inch extruded foam board, board, I cut it a half an inch larger on either side. So when I'm cutting this, I use a T-square um, and I add an inch to the dimensions of the finished puzzle. So when the puzzle is sitting on here, I'll have a half inch of this foam board sticking out on each side. So puzzle is complete. I transferred over to the foam board, um, and then from there, I do a first layer of sealer using a Maj Podge. And the stuff that I use is a matte Maj Podge, and I typically thin it out uh, in a ratio of four, four parts Maj Podge, uh, one part water. And the reason I do that, it just helps with bubbles uh, as it's seeping through the cracks uh, the full strength mod podge it seems to let bubbles pop up and they don't pop all the way and once you pour the resin on it probably all disappears anyways and it's not a big deal uh just a personal preference for me so uh completed puzzle uh one layer of mod podge and then from there uh you let the mod podge dry you can leave it dry in there i peel up the glue puzzle kind of like there so this one has one quarter of Mod Podge on it. And you can see it kind of sticks to the board, uh, but I don't want to risk the chance of this uh, coming off once it's been resined. Uh, some of my earlier attempts, uh, I have seen a few bubbles develop where they were either I didn't have something fully cured or you know it didn't adhere properly. And then the way the resin kind of pulls out and makes a bubble on the puzzle. Uh, it actually holds together and looks fine. It's just more of a personal preference to try and prevent that. Uh, so this is one layer of matte Mod Podge thinned out. Um, from here, I peel it off, and then I apply a layer of this Power Grab Loctite Power Grab and just a V-notch trowel. And I go along and I spread it evenly along here, and then I adhere it back onto the foam board, like so. And I usually weight it down with a few books or something um, just to make sure that it dries nice and flat. So then you end up having a puzzle that looks like this, and this is securely glued down, not going anywhere. Uh, and this is now gonna be ready to frame. Um, so I've played around with a diff few different framing options in the beginning, uh, using wood and creating a Kind of a laminate where I had a tray that I set the puzzle in and then I framed over the top of it to create like a mat to so to take up any imperfections in my frame and that just seemed to be a little bit too involved and what I kind of came to the conclusion was the most efficient um, because I started framing these uh, well I wanted to make something efficient because I'm doing all these villainous puzzles um, and I wanted to make sure they all look same and didn't want to spend all day on them so i found this this product is it's actually white in color i i partially spray painted this because at the end there's going to be this uh hammered black color but this is a pvc j channel brick mold and I'll, again i'll post the link in the description uh three quarter inches wide here so this ends up going right onto your foam here so you can cut your puzzle and get your four pieces around and squeeze it in. It is a little bit tedious getting the dimensions correct. I, I made myself a jig for the miter saw so I could make them all the same size. Um, and these thousand piece Ravensburger puzzles, they're all the same size. So I basically have a jig set up and chop my pieces so they're all the same. On um, the ones that I paint, I typically paint the inner portion here, glue my frame up, and when I glue the frame up, I use just some clear Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, take a little smear, 
smear on the corners and then I have a strap clamp that goes around all four corners. I know, these go on the corners and the strap goes around and then it ratchets in to hold it tight. So I'll smear my glue on, get the frame on the foam board, and then I ratchet it tight, let it dry. I usually do flip it over and I run a bead um, of the construction adhesive along the corner here just to help you know make sure nothing comes apart. Uh, definitely did that on the bigger puzzle underneath here because that's going to be heavier hanging on the wall. Um, so then, once your frame is all glued and dry, it'll look, it'll actually look like this. Um, so this big is a 5,000 piece puzzle that I made a custom frame for. Uh, this is essentially that step where I've Mod Podge, I've glued it to the foam board, I glued the frame. Now this is ready for, I do one more coat of Mod Podge. Uh, probably not 100% necessary, but I do like the Mod Podge filling in the gaps at the corners or any gaps in the pieces that the resin could potentially run into and make a little divot or a little bubble. Uh, also too, if you don't have a good seal on the puzzle, and you go to resin it, you can get some bleed through um, into the puzzle pieces and it'll discolor the puzzle pieces. So that's uh, a bummer, you know, if you spent a lot of time on a puzzle and you're trying to preserve it and you end up wrecking it. So I definitely can't really have too much sealer. And I think that little extra coat at the end there uh, just ensures that you have a good seal on the puzzle and you're not going to get any bleed through. Um, so from there, once that final coat of Mod Podge around the whole puzzle is done, it's ready for resin. Um, and then to resin, I use this Art Resin, ArtResin.com. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's a equal parts mix. I think they have a calculator on their website to tell you the amount that you need. I think for a standard thousand piece Ravensburger puzzle, I call out for 19 ounces. I usually just mix a little extra just because I like even numbers. So I use these little cork containers and paint sticks from the hardware store. I usually do 12 ounces, so 12 and 12. So I got a 12 ounce mark and a 24 ounce mark. Mix it up and then you pour it on. You can spread it out a little bit with your stick. And then I usually just kind of, you know, let it run, let gravity help me out. It will self level to an extent, um, but I do make sure I kind of tilt the puzzle and let it run so it evenly touches the edges and then I kind of stop you know and get it kind of centered the the, the extra and then I do let it just sit and self run um, you'll take a little toothpick or something to get any unfortunately I got pets so I, I'm dealing with pet hair um, you know so you're picking off hairs or brus brussels uh, brush bristles um, while the wet resin is wet and then from there you then take a blowtorch kind of a mesmerizing effect where you just take a start your torch up and nice and quick over the resin and that'll get ready get rid of any little micro bubbles um, if you're really trying to look for that perfect finish the best practice is to cover it uh, after you've gotten the bubbles out because then you don't have any little dust specks um, you really got to look for them if if you don't do it but if you're looking for the perfect finish, that is the ideal thing to do is, you know, cover it with a big uh, Tupperware uh, Sterilite, you know, tote or something like that or a cardboard box and that'll prevent any little dust specks and then you let it sit. Uh, it'll be hard cured overnight, uh, fully cured in 72 hours. Um, and, you know, this is, I think, a little over 24 hours. So this is hard to the touch. Um, but it's not its full hardness in terms of durability. Um, so I'm going to let it sit for another couple days and then I will put some D loops on the back so I can hang it on the wall. But ultimately that is the finished look and it's, it's just really beautiful and crystal clear. It really makes the colors pop on these puzzles rather than your normal puzzle glue. And you have the perfect fit frame where, you know, most times you're doing a puzzle and it seems like the picture frames that are available are everything except the puzzle size that you have. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. Again, not the cheapest option, not the quickest option, 
but it does make a nice finished product. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any specific questions about a specific step in the process, uh, leave me a comment and I'll try to make a video specific to that uh, step in the process. And uh, thanks for watching.